Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is listen. Let's take a look at some of the definitions or ways that we use this verb. The first way you might hear listen used is to mean to give one's attention to a sound. Now, this could be words, uh, but it could be music or other noises or, or sounds that are being made. A second way you'll hear listen used is to take notice of and act on what someone says. So this will come into play with advice, right? So someone might be telling you, here are some things you should do, right? So if you are taking notice and then acting on, then you're listening to them. A third way we can use the verb listen is to mean to be alert and ready to hear something. Um, I know there are many students that spend part of their days or part of their classes listening for a bell so that they can go to recess or lunch or go home at the end of the day. A fourth way to use the verb listen is to mean to urge someone to pay attention. So with this particular meaning, um, you're going to hear it used in the imperative, right? Somebody might say something like, hey, listen right, to try and, and get your attention, right? So you're trying to strongly urge them to pay attention to what you're saying. You should know that listen is a regular verb. To make the progressive tense, all you need to do is add ing to form listening. The past tense and participle forms of this verb are made by adding ed. Our base verb listen, mm, mm, ends with a voiced N sound. So our past tense ending is just going to make a D sound. Listened, listened. Now there are a few phrasal verbs that use listen and we'll start by looking at to listen for. This means to be and remain attentive in order to hear some particular sound. An example of this might be She's listening for the baby to wake up from her nap, right? So she might be listening to hear some crying or some other noises that indicate the baby is awake. A second phrasal verb you might hear is listen in. This means to eavesdrop, and that might be a new word for you. Essentially what it means is you're listening to a conversation between two other people. You're not part of the conversation and those people that are speaking, they might not know that you can hear everything that's being said. An example of this could be, the police have been listening in on the suspect's conversations for weeks. Okay. Now, um, they probably have a court order that allows them to do this. This is not something that happens every day. A third phrasal verb is to listen out for. This means to listen for a particular noise or sound. An example of this, I'm listening out for the garage door to know when they're home, right? So when I hear that particular sound, I know someone is, is coming in and coming home. The last phrasal verb we'll look at is to listen up. Again, uh, this means to pay attention. So the meaning here is very close to that fourth definition. Um, listen up is also going to often be used in the imperative. An example of this might be listen up for your name, right? So uh, perhaps we have a group of people and names are being called for a particular uh, check-in of some kind or event. Um, they're encouraging people, pay attention so you know when your name is called and you are next. We're going to continue practicing with our verb of the day, listen, and we're going to continue to practice in the imperative because I, I think that is quite common for this verb. And then we'll also practice the present progressive or the present continuous. Let's start with the imperative. Some people might know this as commands. So these are rather unique in English because we are telling someone to do an action. 
there is no stated subject in these sentences. Right? So most of our example sentences start with something like he, she, they, we, etc. But we don't have that here. The subject for a command or for an imperative sentence is you. It can be you singular, one person, or you plural, two or more people. And again, we're telling someone to do an action. So the affirmative sentence is always going to begin with just the base verb. Now, many people will say, well, telling someone to do something else might seem a little rude. You could always soften an imperative or make it a bit more polite by adding the word please. You could put please at the beginning of the sentence or please at the end of the sentence, but you do not need it in both places. Now, let's look at our affirmative sentence. Listen to your teacher's instructions. This might be something a parent says to their child, particularly during the first week of school as they're trying to get into new habits and encouraging the children to uh, not only just hear the sounds, but follow the advice that they're be being given or the directions that they're being given. Now, if you want to make a negative imperative sentence, start with do not or the contraction don't and then the base verb. You can see that in the example, don't listen to your friends when it comes to risky behavior. This might be a command you give a teenager. No teens often get tempted with alcohol, drugs, smoking or vaping, etc. Um, and here, maybe a parent is saying, don't take their advice and act on it, right? Now let's, uh, or actually before we move to the present regressive, let me remind you, we don't ask questions in the imperative. So that's why you see that black box there. Now we can move to the present progressive or the present continuous. We use this verb tense to talk about an action that is in progress or an action that is happening right now. To make the present progressive, we need two parts. We need a present form of be, so that's am, is, or are, and then I need the ing form of the verb. You can see this in my affirmative example. I'm listening to my parents' advice to study before hanging out with friends. So again, this goes back to that meaning of sort of comprehending what is being said and then behaving or acting in a particular way. You can see I've made a contraction there with I am. You'll hear many speakers do that. Um, but if it's more comfortable for you to say I am listening to my parents' advice, that's perfectly okay. If you want to make a negative present progressive sentence, you should insert not between the be verb and the ing or progressive form of the verb. You can see that in the example here. They aren't listening to music right now, right? So that would go back to kind of that idea of hearing sounds. And again, if you're not comfortable with the contraction aren't, you can say are not, or you could say they're not listening to music right now. Lots of similar ways to convey the same idea. Finally, if you want to ask a yes or no question in the present progressive, start with your be verb and you're going to pick the form that matches your subject that comes next and then you'll use the ing form of the verb. Is the general public listening to public health officials? So, here, this might sound funny, general public is referring to kind of the millions of people in the country, but public here is singular, so that's why you see the is, is the public listening to public health officials? Um, this is a question many people are asking as uh, COVID cases continue to increase and unfortunately COVID deaths as well. Now let's spend just a couple minutes looking at some words that are related to our verb listen. And the first word we're going to look at has the exact same spelling and the exact same pronunciation. It's just the noun form of the word. The noun form listen can refer to the act of listening to something. An example of this might be 
you must give this song a listen, right? So they're wanting you to engage in the action of listening. Another related word you might hear is listener. This can have a couple different meanings. One would be just a person who listens. An example of that meaning in a sentence would be, the teacher expects all students to be good listeners, right? So good people uh, or people who are good at listening. A second way to use the noun listener is to mean a person who is listening or who regularly listens to a radio station, a podcast, or some other program where it's just audio. So there's nothing to see, right? So watching these videos doesn't make you a listener, right? An example of this noun in a sentence might be, I'm a regular listener of Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. This is a particular show that airs on National Public Radio, or NPR, um, and it's a true sentence. I really enjoy listening to this particular program each week, and um, I occasionally miss one, but I also uh, would say I, I listen to the majority of their shows. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you have a great day.